Namo tassa bhagavato rahato samma sambuddhasa namo tassa bhagavato rahato samma sambuddhasa namo tassa bhagavato <coughs> arahato samma sambuddhasa udang dhammang sangang namasami <clears throat> so, clearing the floods. <clears throat> I hope to have been able to put aside to a good extent your normal duties and uh, occupations. Because um, one of the things we do on retreat and especially about the retreat situation is we um, don't follow our own normal actions mm. uh, mm. you, you know, we don't operate at the same do the same things we don't um, operate in the normal way you know, we haven't got the same routines, we don't go to the same places, we're not doing our house or business or work. So it's kind of impersonal. We don't really, generally on retreat, you don't even talk. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of impersonal. Mm. That can seem quite cold at first and strange and weird and emotionally dysfunctional. <laughs> That's why it's helpful to, you know, to do things like puja together, chanting together. So some sense there are voices and human beings meeting and some expression of heart. And I think the heartfulness has to be, uh, find a, an expression, a proper expression. And this is heartfulness is not really personal. It's not like I'm really like you, particularly, it's just there is a warmth, you know, which we can all get into. And it's irrespective of, you know, all the normal classifiers of size or shape or, or form, and energies, you know, and you're a vigorous, bright, bubbly person or, you know, whatever. It's irrespective of all that, you're just being a human. So it's a nice way we really can come together as a warmth in it. Yeah, and you're picking up signs of, of warmth, inclusivity, uh, aspiration, and the human voice with all its, its uh, tremendously evocative uh, quality. Mm. This is because of, this is to do with Apart from anything else, this is to do with the karmic, clearing karma, the karmic flood. Now, I've used that term a few times, or this area of the karma where we get flooded. Um, you probably know karma means action, it's what you do. But it also refers to what you, how you're, how you're activated, what touches you. So as it said in the Sutta, contact is the source of karma. Contact is the source of karma. This is where it begins. Something touches your heart and you go, oh, yeah. And that's where the action starts. It's activation, it's called, is the sankara, it means an activating energy. And uh, that activates, something touches and it activates. And, uh, yeah, and as you can imagine, in terms of human chitta, then there's certainly, you know, sensitivities, how we can activate is going to be around uh, love or fear. Are we welcome or not welcome? Are we threatened or safe? That's going to be a very big sensitive area to get activated around. So, you know, contact 
you know, and then there's kind of what is nourishing and, and uh, gives us a feeling of plenitude, which is bleak. You know, we feel deprived. And of course, just the presence of other people immediately sets up the comparative. Um, how is she? How, am I, how are we together? What does he think? How does he feel about me? Um, this kind of stuff is bigger, more powerful than me. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so all this stuff starts happening. And it happens on retreats when people are completely silent. People are getting all kinds of issues with each other. In people that don't even know each other. They're still getting issues. <laughs> Just because of what this person reminds me of, or the way their body moves, you know, threatening movement, and the person's just walking along, you know. And so for the other person, that's threatening, you know. And, uh, and they're not making it up. Because the chitta is, is sensitized, you know, in terms of these fundamental signals, you know, threat, safety. Uh, you know, uh, included, excluded, uh, compared, um, you know, nourished, uh, or, or starved, you know. These kind of, obviously, these are very fundamental signals for any sentient creature. And human beings, we're getting those signals no longer from wild animals, but from other people. Mm. Yeah. And so we have those fundamental sensitivities, and depending on how our interactions have been in the world, you know, certain, you know, certain these these potential sensitivities around threat or welcome. You know. Now, people do threaten and do welcome. People do intimidate and dominate and control. And also people don't. They kind of say, please, up to you. you know. But, you know, when, when the jitta is experiencing you know, uh, an imbalance in terms of loss of welcome, you know, an imbalance in terms of, so it's not, not it's a lot of the time it's not feeling welcome, or it's not feeling um, appreciated, or is feeling lessened, intimidated, made smaller, left out, uh, something wrong with you, etc. Then those areas become, you could say, inflamed. Mm -hmm. You've had a good amount of it. So that area of your chitta is pretty, pretty sensitive around anything that gives rise to that sign and experience. And somebody says something and bang, a whole lot flies up because the sound of the voice, you know, the color of the skin. You know, and you look at anything, well, yeah, I can understand that. You know, if you've had that kind of treatment from white people for generations, I can understand why you, you know, you don't feel that comfortable with me. Understandable, uh, you know, for I even said anything, you know, completely understandable. Um, so you, this is so. This is an aspect of, of 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 how karma works. Contact impression doesn't mean just something happens, like you know, the, the sound hits the ear. That's one kind of contact, which is just ordinary. Something happens. Real contact is what the manas faculty, that's the mind, takes that sound and says, oh, that's that's threat, plops into the chitta, chitta goes, Oy! you know, gets all its buttons pushed. And this is happening a good deal around the time, you know. And as if you like this so and the history of humanity, you know, social areas, social social conditioning. You go, I go to retreat centres and find out, you know, women don't feel safe with men around. You think, you know, and then you find out why. Oh, all right, you know, so colour people don't people of colour don't feel safe with white people. Around. Think, right, yeah, I get it. You think, Actually, not many people feel safe with anybody. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of unsafety and threat. Mm. Uh, and it's very 
powerfully enforced in, in the domain. And if you're just in the organized world, you, you look, you know, you're traveling around, you see so much control. Stop, speed limit, drive this way, don't drive that way, no entry, zero tolerance, you know, and often in big, bold capital letters, like boo, 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 flashing lights. <laughs> so you're definitely made to feel you are small. <laughs> obey <laughs> otherwise punishment will happen to you. <laughs> you, you, know, you go to an airport security you know, whenever I go to an airport where we're in this you know so standard up against the wall you know, <laughs> pat down I thought I thought, I thought this is what I so <laughs> say so particularly I go to the United States you're very conscious of, of security and, and borders and you go there and you think this must be the traditional way of welcoming people is to pat them down. <laughs> so you kind of get used to it after a while. Hello, would you like to pat me? <laughs> and they'll look in my bag, you know, and ask me what my what my what my my clothes are about, you know, because they want to poke around under my robes when I've got a bomb in there. <laughs> and you're thinking, wow, but then Oh yeah, they're all terrorists. <laughs> they're all terrorists, not only religious terrorists. Mm, yeah, you know, so the safety, you get the sense that there's an, there's an inheritance, which is, I haven't done anybody. I don't think I've harmed anybody in my life physically <laughs> at all. <laughs> you know, I might have squashed a beetle or something like that. That's about it. When I was kids have it in, so you don't really get it but then you get the sense of you're in a kind of there's the group karma um, mm -hmm. group sensitivities and then you begin to pick up the signs you know uh, you, you learn the, the signs and and so very it's always in public domain you've got the uniform the person in the uniform says something you do it I remember they've done these kind of fake shows where somebody who's not, you know, an official of any kind just puts a uniform on and it goes up to somebody in, in a public place and says, uh, a little, I want to sit on this seat. And they'll get up <laughs> and give them the seat, just like that, because of, because of the uniform. The sign, what the sign means. And you think, wow, we're so, and we carry all that, all that signing of fear, threat, unwelcome, you know, shut up, you're controlled, behave yourself. And we carry, carry all those signals embedded and some waiting for the, you know, on a, on a hair trigger, something touches it and then you go into that, activated. Mm -hmm. And, and this, uh, and, and so naturally, when the system has got a lot of that going in it, these activations going in it, and you try and actually just, you know, get on with the day. You know, it's not time to go on weird now. Just get on with it. So you basically stuff it and just keep going. You know, because you've got to hold it together, right? So you just kind of. Sh so there's these sort of kind of sense of when people are doing that, there's a you can almost feel the, the the tension and the fear and the exclusions in the public domain. Everybody's kind of holding their stuff together. You know? So there's an isolation. You can have a and very commonly, most isolated places are big cities where there's a million people. You think it'd be least isolated. That's because where the most threat is. So there's lots of people, everybody's sitting around, walking around in their own bubble and, hey, you know, I'm not going to notice anybody, I'm going to get my stuff done because of the threat. You go to a little village, uh, oh, hey, what are you doing? Which uh, I noticed particularly when I was on pilgrimage in India, you know, you go to a little village and 
it's like, oh, hello, what are you doing? You know, please sit down. It's very welcoming. They don't, they don't carry, they don't feel that the stranger is not a threat. Because in little villages, there's nothing much to steal. People don't throw bombs in little villages, you know. <clears throat> there's not a lot of law and order. It's just a you know, sense of people know who they are and they work according to, to um, ethical, um, ethical values because if you don't, you know, the village will, people will say, look, that's not on, that's not on, you know, you got much something more human. And, but when you live in these, these big conurbations, that's not possible. So you have to have this surveillance system which carries threat in it. And there's the massive group karma. And so you're in that. And you don't know why, but it's just, you don't know why it feels so strange. Why? You get used to it, walking along and not talking to anybody, walking along and kind of having a, one eye behind, check what's going on. Uh, driving through certain areas of town and making sure you don't slow down uh, in case somebody comes out and smashes your wind, wind, windshield. You normal, close down, but then although you close down, you don't you don't close down the impressions. You just override them, so the the threat, the fear, remain, and this is kind of how people get on. Now, of course, uh, there's such a thing as the, the you know the inheritance of of um, as can be social inheritance, it's also personal inheritance. And, <clears throat> you know, one finds that people carry a huge amount of contact impressions derived from their upbringing, um, of not feeling welcome, feeling unsafe, being bullied, uh, abused by parents, bullied at school, um, looked down upon because of their figure or shape or something or the other or just for no reason at all just because the father was drunk or the mother was a schizophrenic or something or the other so they got used to the being abused and dumped and and uh, the sins of commission and also the sins of omission nobody did anything just nobody provided much right you know human warmth you were always ordered but not really loved so then that has effects we don't <clears throat> you can find a person doesn't really they know what the word well various interpretations of the word love erotic or enjoyment but they don't know love as welcome be who you are don't know that one which is the most important one, <laughs> unfortunately, the one that really counts. The rest of it just comes and goes, you know. But to feel, to get the, to, to feel stable and peaceful, you have to feel welcome in life. And so the, the problem of the person is the person can arise in a situation where they have not been welcome they've been trained <laughs> rather you know <laughs> so those you see what i mean the chitta is then highly attuned to signs of not welcome and not attuned to signs of welcome so when welcome is offered the person doesn't really get it because they don't have the they get the idea, but the body, body is so conditioned into that, it doesn't pick it up. The body doesn't pick it up. Yeah. Because, um, you know, the words say one thing, 
as we all know, people are very good at saying, thank you very much, have a good day, lovely to see you, nice, how are you doing? <laughs> it's just, just social gesture. Uh, but uh, that's the second language of that we, second or third language. We, the first language you learn is the language of the body, isn't it? Before you have words, you know, you get picked up. You get picked up, held. You know, somebody picks you up and holds you in a, in a comforting way. And it goes on. That's the first language you, you learn is the language of touch. And it's said that if, if little, little ones don't have enough touch, they, they become autistic or, or even probably problematic. There's something just about touch, physical, warm, friendly touch that helps this jitter experience to come into a body <laughs> you know it's it doesn't you know, jitta is is not a body so so jitta awareness mind heart arises takes birth and it's it's a bit of a struggle you know getting conceived and gestated and born it's a bit of a struggle and then you, you, you come into this sense of being a separate form. You know, what's that? Because jitter's never, it's not a separate form. <laughs> it's always an integrated sensitivity with this environment, right? It's a sensitivity with its environment. And now you're experiencing having edges and boundaries and being something separate. And that takes some doing. So the jitter's looking out for the signs of, you know, how does this, where does the safe, how do I get to feel belonging here? You know, because that's, that's the, the jitta arises in a relational field of impressions. You know, it's, it hasn't got boundaries. You know, and now we're in something that does have boundaries. So it's very important to notice what's happening. Those boundaries It's got to figure out, you know, how does it how does it fit in with the rest of this stuff that's going on it's looking at its fingers going what's that thing you know and they trying to check it out and that's what these small people do when they're first born and look at what's going on you know and it gets a big smiling face looks over them and cuddles and they oh that's okay i'm all right you know <laughs> and the, so they get the, the tactile and they get sound you know it's kind of burbling warm sounds and they they don't know language just mother or father burbles at them nice easy flowing sound okay that means they get that comfortable safe you know nothing harsh and abrasive so they've gradually been introduced into a, a form in a welcoming mode you know, you're integrated you're welcome here and um you know hopefully <laughs> uh, but it's not always not there's not always it's not always that much of it and it's sort of sometimes it, it, it the, the that that period stops <laughs> quickly you know, and then the person isn't really chitra isn't really integrated into a, into this form it doesn't feel the the setting is not one of welcome the setting is do something right and you'll be welcome <laughs> it's conditional it's conditional. What what is right? I'll tell you what's right. <laughs> okay. That's the beginning of it. I'll tell you. You won't know for yourself. I'll tell you. So then you start, okay, and I'll tell you what's wrong. You're a bad boy. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's not that was an unskillful action. <laughs> you know, and why it's an unskillful action and, you know, how that happened. But 
something wrong with you. So this kind of messaging and a lack of the something really beautiful about you, this, this very much forms part of people's upbringing, particularly in the, when people have got to work, go out to work for so many hours a day, they don't have the time, they're, they're stressed out. Maybe they didn't get it from their parents either. So you could pass on the stress, you know, pass on the deprivation. I learned it from my parents, so I pass it on to you. <laughs> and so this, you can have this kind of thing happening. And so the person actually is sensitized, much more attuned to the unwelcome, something wrong with me, than the, I'm okay. And once that default is set, then you can fill in the details. Because of course we do make mistakes, do stupid things. That doesn't mean something wrong with me. It just means I, that I haven't learned it yet. Please help me out. Just haven't learned it yet. Could you point out how that works? Yeah. Could you help me? So this is skillful education, isn't it? trying to find investigation and this is kind of what we're trying to establish for ourselves too. But often we're working against the whole set of inherited programs, and basically the, you know, the program of there's something wrong with you. Um, so you can't trust um, your, your judgment because there's something wrong with you. And in that being, and as there is, and you realize, yeah, there is something wrong with me. I feel kind of nervy and neurotic at times. It's right. You know, there is something wrong. I can't trust my own judgment because I'm, you know, I've got some funny habits. But why is there something wrong with you? It's because people are telling you there's something wrong with you when you believed it. <laughs> you got it. So, so now you've grown up in a kind of slightly, defect, you know, lack of confidence, lack of trust, lack of, you know, and always having to do something immediately and fear of getting it wrong. A lot of fear of getting it wrong. You know, getting it wrong is disgrace, blame, so forth. And you think, oh, but how are you going to know? How are you going to learn unless you can get it wrong? You know, how are you going to learn? Unless you can, unless you can get it wrong and go, oh, that's how it, oh, that's how it is, yeah. Now I'll try it this way. And there's no, it's just, it's just, it's navigation. Navigation we're doing, not moral judgment. <laughs> You're a wrong person. So no, you should have turned left there or go a bit more slowly or that kind of language has that sort of effect. Oh, okay, good. No. So it's a very different process, you know, particularly important to understand when we come around to, to ethics and refinement of ethics. So you've got the basic precepts, but then you're looking at much more ethical sensitivity. You know, when is my language difficult for you or abusive? I've, I've learned this language. It's not my native language. It's the language I've learned from my tribe. So, you know, you're saying stuff that you don't know how it's going to affect other people. Mm -hmm. And you're saying things that can have powerful effects on people just because of how they see you. So if I'm seen as an authority figure, then everything I say has got a certain weight and intensity to it that wouldn't be the case if I wasn't seen that way. To me, I'm just saying something. You know, so you, so you start to just get this, this is a tricky area. A lot of it has to be negotiated. That's, that's what we're in. Just checking in, how is this? How is that? Let me know. And I completely understand, you know, that I could be doing something wrong without intending to. How, how do I find out? And so then you're really learning that externally and trying to learn it 
internally, not because I'm fundamentally wrong, but I'm, I have not been educated, you know, in a really integrated human way. I've been educated in abstract knowledge and, um, and um, you know, um, praise and blame, not guidance, but praise and blame. Which just this hit of not, not something that's calibrated intelligence, but but just the hit of blame or the surge of praise. Not well. Somebody says that was great. What was so great about it? Could you give me some details? Because I'd like to learn. That was stupid. Okay, give me some details. I'd like to learn which particular pieces are going wrong. I don't need I don't need the blame. I need some instruction. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to recognize these these powerful triggers that generally imply you're rejected or, or stupid or lesser or abnormal or weird or something. Uh, th those triggers and just you know, you know relate to human being. You know, one searching for understanding, uh, one who is affected by the experience of other people, profoundly affected by the experience of other people, by the voice tones, by the body language, all these kind of things. You know, and I'm trying to really look into, you know, how does how do we how do we move out of that? How do we move out of being a, a flood for other people? Out of triggering other people's floods? And how do we move out of being triggered? Our own floods being triggered by other people. And how do we move out of sitting privately in our own room and triggering our floods just with a memory and a thought and an attitude? <laughs> Suddenly you're sitting there and you manage to, you know, the mind manages to cock, cock a scenario of your, of your own inadequacy out of nothing, you know, or very little. Mm. So you look out for the signs, is the, is the reminder, look out for the signs. If you're the sign of, the sign of threat, the sign of, uh, a sign of pressure and urgency. I've got to make it otherwise. Look out for that sign. If I don't do this, I will be. That sign of other people think I am. I'm not. Well, I'm not welcome here. I'm not good enough. Look out for those signs. And stop. Body. Body says you're welcome. Breathing says you're welcome. Loving kindness says you're welcome. Center, reclaim your chitta. Bring it back. Reclaim your chitta from, take it out of karmic history. You know, it's impossible to work through all the weaves of every event we've had, but you know the basic triggers. Take your chitta out of that body, says you're welcome. Hmm. Why it's so important to cultivate that, that uh, those four postures in a way that is not just some technique, but it's your body. Stand, sit, walk as you are. Breathe as you are. But you know the programming such that even these things which should be simple, once you say oh, this is meditation, and it leads to awakening and there's samadhi. Oh right, I've got to get it right. Yeah, you know, how do I do it? I'm gonna get it right. I'm probably not gonna you know, so immediately the tension starts and urgency and pressure and the thing system just goes weird. <laughs> Because 
we're getting the signal of got to go, got to perform, got to succeed, and you know, failure. And then, of course, the city you get a bit strange, and naturally, it doesn't go very well. So you think it proves it. Can't meditate either. Sometimes it's good to forget about this word and just sit there. <laughs> And just sit there. You look out the window and just sit there and, and learn how to just dis discharge the day, just discharge the day and just give up being somebody, just you know, not having to be anybody at all. You just sit there. And you think, oh, oh yeah, I can feel I'm breathing. Because <laughs> it's so. You know, I think that was the idea when the Buddha taught this. He said, oh, just go somewhere quiet, sit under a tree and sit there and, you know, sit in a nice way so you feel properly grounded and stable and your canopy of a tree over you, feeling safe and out of the heat and the shade, nobody bothering you. And just be there feeling yourself breathing, which is just so obvious everybody can do it. It's natural, involuntary action. So you don't have to make anything, just let it happen, be with that. There you go. <laughs> Should be easy. <laughs> but of course, <laughs> as we know, <laughs> things get in the way. <laughs> yeah. For a start, because breathing itself is operated through the nervous system. So your nervous system is tense and your breathing gets tense. And once you, then, you, then your mind, if your mind is in this, got to make this work, got to get this going, attitude creates more tension. You don't get the enjoyment, comfort, and ease, and, and the, you, just, you just created or re-replicated, replicated old karma. The basic karmic configuration of got to make this work, got to be good at, not really that good, something wrong with me, I'm the one who can't make it. All that starts to crystallize around this or should be a fairly innocent activity. <laughs> and, and of course, the, when the, the person who is formed out of the karmic accumulation, the person starts meditating <laughs> rather than the chitta opening to the experience of being in a, in a body in a comfortable way and feeling, feeling the, the ease of breathing in and out which is, I think, what the Buddha was <laughs> hoping we would be the case. The person starts meditating and they try to focus and get concentrated and do this stuff and make it the system and get going and how, how long should you do it? How much samatha before you do vipassana? And is it better to do it in the evening or the morning? And, you know, well, you know, it's, it gets in like that you just stop mm -hmm. so it's always a, so you know it's, it's simpler repeat it trying to find a safe place and recognize safe places perhaps not you know room is okay but you still carry no signals of not safe so there's got to be a lot of this deliberate claiming and feeling. And safe is a, is a powerful word, but not obliged, no pressure, no urgency, free from blame. Blame is not here. Performance is not here. Comparison is not here. You know? no, it's not here. You don't need that. Get it out. Mm. Goal orientation, oh, achievement, not here. You know, and then it, it will it, it grows in a healthy way. And as it grows, certainly you, you're entering it once you come into that domain where the chitta, rather than the person, if you like, is meditating. The chitta begins to open its, its difficult places. 
you know, it's like suddenly the person, which acts as a kind of a, a case around the chitta, and often is strategized to avoid its difficult places. It's got places where we shut off, we just get busy doing something else rather than feel that funny, lonely feeling. We go and do something and, you know, or that strange, worthless feeling. We go and eat something, you know, something to compensate. The person gets these strategies whenever they get to their twitchy bit or their nervy bit or their empty bit, they find something to do. Now on retreat, so we're taking away that, taking the toys out of the room. And so the jitter has to, ooh, as it opens, it meets its bruised areas, right? Uh, uh, it has to, because this is where we want to do our clearance. And you can't, but rather than, you now if this, so, so contemplating the signs, because what will happen pretty quickly when a sign touches that your mind would immediately hit, feel that sign and the manas faculty, thinking mind, oh, pulls a scenario off the shelf. Oh, and there you are, you're remembering this. Yeah. You get the sign of threat and there you are, you're remembering this occasion when you were threatened. Yeah, or pulls the sense of worry and you remember this occasion when you were lost or confused or and there may be many of them. So the, the manas faculty, you know, picks up the resonance, creates the story, drops it into the jitter, the jitter, woo, 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 and all the narratives run out. And that can be a common experience in meditation. An old, old karma. And if we engage with it, then um, the karma is intensified. You engage with it, um, decisively think about it and act upon it, then the karma is intensified. You've just made it, you've embedded it a little deeper. If it's not engaged with, then you've, you've weakened it. So that's, that's very simply the process. You know, it, it, when these forms arise, inadequacy, fear, craving, whatever, take the person out of it. Try to, when the scenarios come up, sense and then go really drop the scenario and just go to the feeling. You know, the felt sense, not just the, not, not just the physical, not just the quality of pleasure or pain, but fundamentally the sankara, which are to remind you again, that's the activation, that's that shimmering, that's that surging. And go to the sanya, which is the sign of, this is the sign of, you know, getting it wrong. This is the sign of, of nervousness, yeah? And you don't need the story. And so you're experiencing that, you know, can you stand back from that stable presence? Just find your spine, your body. And how is that? That sign, that sankara, that sanya is moving and flowing and changing, right? And certainly evoking all kinds of, of moods and feeling. Now, one strategy is you just step back from it. If you don't engage with it, it will weaken. And the more you do that, the more it will weaken. So you might be doing this for quite a period of time. That's one strategy. Another strategy is, is meet it with something that um, counteracts it. So we bring the loving kind, the compassion, kindness, goodwill towards that. Like, oh, this is the sign of agitation. So you're just like holding a, holding a, screaming baby rather than shut up <laughs> behave yourself it's like just this is other things going a bit crazy now let's just hold it and give it some bit of touch you know bump it up and down and burble at it that's what works so we do that figuratively perhaps mm -hmm. touch is important 
you know, I mean, you're not going to hold these things in your hands, but have that same kind of sense of being right up there and feeling it. And with a, with a strong intention that, that's just not wanting to shut it up, but just wanting to be with that comfortably, you know, comforting way. Some things, some, some, some experiences, they're not even, you don't even get a picture, so you know, you just get something in your body that goes, Ey. you know, when it's shimmering, shaking, strange, or even nauseous. Because um, so, some experiences they're not verbal, mm. you know, they don't come out verbally. Um, so a lot, though, a lot of meditation practice, you know, talks about the chattering mind and dealing with the chattering mind. The chattering mind is not really such a big problem. It's why it chatters chattering to get away from other things you know and so we're trying to use our deep attention you only saw me sikara to say you know what what's the source of that what's the restlessness what's the urging away you know what's the wanting to just sometimes just padding you know old songs old memories just to have something there to to take away that rather lonely bleak bit mm -hmm. And so look, try and sympathetically look into the emotion and what's needed there. It's always going to be in the manner of some kind of goodwill, you know, or, or allowance, equanimity. We don't necessarily have to figure it out why it's like that. You know, when you have a baby crying, you don't say, can you tell me what the problem is? No, you, you know, that may come, but basically you just, you know, do the, do the comforting thing. And now some some experience particularly is of a traumatic nature whereby it's 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 sort of embedded in the body, um, very strong reflex, and it may not have any words associated with it. It's something that's, that's so acutely painful the body immediately shuts it down. You don't it doesn't want to know. It's a kind of defense system. Yeah. So these then, you know, you may feel like certain tensions or there's like some get sucked, pulled towards these areas in your body, in your embodiment. Maybe everywhere, you know, or a lot of your body. Um, or running up one side or your face feels strange or, or heat, something like that. And these experiences can happen too. Principal law rule is, or principal guideline is, you don't go into them, which again is, is significant because that's kind of what the person does. The person goes in and fixes things, but we're not. You don't don't resolve this. The person can't resolve the person, so you can't use the person's methods which may be to push through or figure out or get it sorted or figure it somewhere or another. No, the person's strategies don't work because the person is the problem. It's the jitta's movement that works and the proper trained jitta doesn't jump, it suffuses. It doesn't slam stuff in, it suffuses. You don't come across that word too often, do you? Suffuses and pervades, and yet this is one of these phrases in our chanting, pervading the entire world, metta, and in the cultivation of jhana, um, the first jhana, which isn't even described as concentration. Doesn't even talk about concentration. He says this jhana, which is born of disengagement, you're just stepping back and feeling the sense of simple, stable presence and pleasant, comfortable. From there, one pervades the entire body with the happiness 
that comes from that disengagement pervades and he uses the image just as someone mixing up soap powder with water in a sponge saturates the sponge with the soap so there's not one part of that sponge isn't steeped and saturated with this soapy water right even in this case even like this one pervades and saturates the entire body so there's not one pore that is not saturated, steeped with this happiness that comes from disengagement. Chitta pervades, suffuses. It's got a sense of something that softly expands into an area. It doesn't invade, it doesn't intrude. It like soaks, slowly soaks into the tissues. So where does this nervous tension or it soaks, it's cool, open, no pressure, be as you are, saturates, no pressure, be as you are, warming the entire body. Why does the Buddha say that? <laughs> if Nibbana is the unconditioned and what do we do with this body thing? <laughs> so that's how he just had, that's the way he realized the enlightenment through that process. Clearly he had to, he had to work his own some karma out uh, in the body. The residues of Aggression and fear, residues of intoxication and fascination, they all leave, they all leave their traces, you know. Yeah. This is not being judgmental, it's just being honest. They leave their traces. You've got, you know, nervous system gets rattled by panic and by impatience and by stress and by aggression and by fear. They're not just ideas. They, they, they saturate, so you, then you have to saturate with the opposite and the person can't do that, but the chitta can. And we've got to really trust the chitta to do that in its own way. Because the person would tell you, okay, let's get in there and deal with that. No, it's not, that's not it. <laughs> That's not going to do it. And the, the, the log, real kind of the logic about it, of course, in a way, is logical that a person is the problem. So when the person approaches the problem, the problem intensifies. <laughs> it's like, here she comes again. You know, then she comes again, the pushy one, <laughs> and the whole thing seizes up, not letting her in. You know, the person who has <laughs> accumulated karma, uh, you know, and then sort of developed a particular strategies for shutting things out and getting on with life, that carries a particular mark. We become, in a way, our own the person becomes, strangely enough, almost our, our own worst enemies. You know? But of course, I'm not don't want to take this too intensely because we're not just a person. We're also a heart, you know? and magnificently, you know, we can, when human beings meet heart to heart, then a lot of these personal fears and you know issues drop away 
it, it doesn't it's a, it's beautiful to see how these things can be resolved by just people being heartful with each other and honest with each other but if we come in with it when well, i am this then well, it's them again you know <laughs> and, and your own body knows that your body's your embodiment is frightened of you because you've been overriding it for the last 25 years <laughs> you've been telling it to to shut up because you've got to go to work. You've been telling it it's not time for that now. You've been telling it that's inconvenient. That's been telling you've been telling it you shouldn't be that way. Yeah. So when the the wound, you know, sees sees the aggressor coming, it's going to close up, get agitated. So you, you can't take the put the person in there. What, what, what can I do? Relax. Quiet them. Go to the place for your stability with a person, all those personal characteristics are subdued. And the sun is just a simple, spacious, steady, loving quality. Who doesn't know what to do, hasn't got a plan. Yeah. It's just just the qualities of goodwill, patience, they're just there. This is the chitta extending its own nature mm. Mm. towards that which is afflicted. And, you know, and then, like anything else, like any, any other situation, you know, the painful bit will recognize that. Oh, this is not that one. And to be welcomed back rather than fixed. To be welcomed back into presence, however messy, weird you are, to be welcomed back. That is such an enormous healing. It's not even a gesture. I use the word gesture. Gesture makes it too contrived. Yeah. And we actually incline that sense of this is what forgiveness is about. It means you're welcoming back into presence that which has hurt you. Not because it hasn't hurt you, because this is where it ends. Yeah. Uh, you know, forgiveness may be perhaps a not quite right word, but it's a sense of meeting in that modest way um, without a strategy, a lecture, I should be uh, a plan, meeting in that simplicity and welcoming back. The, uh, the problematic mm. and this leads to those energies then start to shift the hostile energies begin to release yeah mm. places that are locked up start to melt things may seem strange but you have to trust the process this is the way we clean out embedded karma Naturally, we're still all, you know, we can be attuned to threat and fear, and but, you know, the more you practice this, those signs themselves begin to dissolve. So the liberation, the liberated one is called signless. Liberation is the signless deliverance of the heart. The heart doesn't have any signs scribbled all over it. It's released them. It's pure, it's innocent, it's open. It's not carrying these triggering influences. This is when it really has finished. Mm. 
but for now <laughs> let's practice with what we have you know walking sitting standing and keeping it simple keeping it trustworthy um, practicing straight from the heart for your welfare and happiness Pandamayam da dama kataya sadhu karam da dama se sadhu 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 anumodam. Okay, friends, so take some time. We now, yeah. Have an hour or so of private practice, and perhaps we could get together at another hour. But see what feels right. And it's always to use this framework for what it's meant for, to help and support you, not as some kind of, you know, compulsive regime. <laughs> <Forward to. laughs> anyway, I'll be here. I'll be back. I'll be here at, the, at the, in about an hour's time, just to sit here and happy to. You join me that would be wonderful take care